And welcome, boys and girls, ladies and germs, uh, to what I presume is going to be a uh, another uh, exciting and, and kind of bizarre edition <laughs> of the, uh, again, tentatively uh, being called uh, The Ryan Dixon Show, uh, because I'm Ryan Dixon, and it's a show, and so, uh, you know, you put the two together, and there you go. Uh, <laughs> so, episode two, it's uh, Wednesday, July 9th, in the year of our Lord, 2014. The year of our Lord, 2014. Just hope this is better than Star Wars episode two. Uh, oh, God, that was a terrible... Um, and uh, <laughs> joining me tonight uh, is our guest, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Jonathan Rumian, and... Um, Mute that. That is always going to... Is that going to happen every time? You just... Every time... Just make sure the thing's muted. So, as I said, kind of in the first episode, uh, when it comes to shows, it's a little like bringing something, uh, you know, in, in, into being. Uh, it's a little messy, a little bloody, a little noisy. Uh, but eventually, you know, uh, it may or may not turn out okay. So, that's where we're at. Kind of graphic. It is a little bit, but I kind of like it that way. I like things a little, you know... Um, but uh, tonight, joining us, we got Jonathan Rumian. Jonathan Rumian, of course, a, a good friend of mine now. Um, a uh, one of the developers with uh, Monotos, which um, kind of a becoming a big name or is a big name, I guess, in the the Bitcoin sphere, um, uh, amongst other things. Might have seen him on uh, was it CNBC? Was that the special uh, that they did? Yeah, uh, CNBC. Yeah, it was that's like a 30-minute special, I think, on, that they did on Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, you popped in on there. Uh, he's uh, pretty fluent in the the, the language of the, the cybers, uh, or whatever, however you want to put that. And, uh, um, not that way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also a, 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 a pretty smart guy. He's, uh, he uh, graduated uh, with, uh, what, was, what was the degree that you had? Uh, it was like information security, disaster recovery. And that was before you graduated high school. Yeah. Okay. So uh, um, that's kind of where we're at. And, of course, uh, my my uh, lovely little companion, the uh, the lovely as always, Mr. Leland Freeman. Leland, show the, the folks your pretty face. Say hello. Say hello. <laughs> so did you, did you get in? Did you say hello? Can we, yes, can I we did. Can we see you? Okay. Um... Maybe, I just, to... maybe just kill the stream on your end. Yeah, I have. Because it's like uh, what, 30, 45 seconds. Yeah, there's a big delay, so it's hard to tell. Um, <clears throat> like, I queue it up beforehand, and I've got to remember to kill it afterwards. Um, but, yeah, so we've just wrapped up uh, show number one, of course, the, the crypto show. Uh, Jonathan, you helped me out with that. It was a lot of fun. Did you enjoy it? Was yeah. It was as good for you as it was for me. Yeah, it's always a lot of fun. <laughs> um. And we kind of went over a lot of stuff on that. I think maybe we'll rehash some of the stuff because I'm sure there's probably not a lot of crossover at this point between um, that show and this one. Um, but uh, So we'll kind of get into some of the stuff as far as uh, you just got back from Switzerland, uh, hung out with Ethereum. That was a good time, I imagine. Um, and then, uh, you know, I guess uh, Leland, of course, you want to kind of get into... Uh, we, have a, we have a visitor right now. Um, you want to? Did you want to uh, talk about that a little bit? What the later uh, on the uh, on paper the forty third president? Yeah, the whole town's <laughs> on lockdown. Yeah, so it's uh, I wouldn't go so far. When is the town not on lockdown? It's a uh, well. There's so many cops here. <clears throat> so many. Yeah, it's really kind of a surprise when I you can't look even go at, to the green belt and feel comfortable. I um I actually have a a, a weird thing that actually kind of reminds me. Um, I have kind of a thing about um, when it comes to driving and um, police and everything. Um, when it comes to that, I tend to, like, I mean, all my stuff is um, up to speed. All my stuff's up to code. Leland's motioning something in the dark, and I don't know what he's... Rotate. Go ahead and just say it. Just ro rotate your, your, your computer slightly that way. Are, are you happy? Towards your face. Um, right. Like I said, it's a little messy initially, folks. This is this is part of the birthing process. Breathe. Um. <laughs> I am breathing. I don't. What are you on about, man? Here, let me just do it. So, anyways, a lot I of cops here in Austin. He actually moved it right back to where it was. No, you, you rotated it the wrong way. Yeah. Are you are you just, content with what yeah, you're just, saying? Uh, yeah. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> God. Uh, okay. So, back to where we were before that. Um, but no, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, the, the, for Austin being, you know, having this kind of, like, kind of, you know, hip, weird, you know, sort of vibe, whatever, um, it's a little heavy on, on the state. Um, and I guess any amount of the state is a little much. But, um, you know, it, it, it's heavy on the state, even given the existing conditions um, of, you know, if you're going to have government in general, whatever. Um and but I, I have a habit of, of uh, almost everywhere I go I take back roads now um, typically and it's just mainly because um, I'm less likely to encounter police right um, you know driving through a neighborhood than I am on you know a major highway or something like that um, and I don't know if this is like a habit that most people adopt or practice or whatever like I mean I just I'm not in a hurry like I'll take the extra 20 minutes that it takes. It's a you know it's a more enjoyable ride. It might cost a little bit more in gas, but you know like I'm less likely to get in accidents. I'm less likely to and be involved with the state. Um, of course, another thing that I have a tendency to do is um, when I see them, um, I just I just get off the road because I mean that's that first step. Like if they can see you, then you that's the first step. Uh, towards them, you know, pulling you over and, you know, getting in your business. And, you know, assuming that you're not doing anything wrong, because most people aren't, um, you know, there's no victim in anything for the most part, right? Um, at least when somebody's smoking a plant or, you know, whatever. Um, then, you know, the, but they're going to, even even if you, you know, end up, you know, they end up sending you on your merry way and, you know, spanking on the butt and saying, have a nice day, it's still not a win, um, even, you know, because you had to waste that time. You had to waste that, you know, like that's a loss. Right. That's a loss of your time, your liberty, uh, you know, probably your health. Yeah. Because if you think about, you know, you go to the doctor, right, and uh, what, what do they always say? They come in the thing and they go, well, have you been under a lot of stress lately? You know, that's always the, that's always the thing. They always, and they tell you the, one of the first things they're like, well, try to take it easy and kind of relax and don't stress it. Like stress is like a huge killer. And, you know, when you try get one of these relax. guys... Yeah, I like when they say that. Try to relax. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, but, so, you know, and when you get these guys behind you, obviously it has that effect. And so when I see them, I just I just nope out on it. Like, I see it, and I just kind of go, yeah, no, nah, not today. Um, and I'll pull over to the first available place, regardless, day or night. It could be a, you know, podiatrist at four in the morning, and I'll, you know, I mean, if I got to have that in gate, well, yeah, I was just uh, looking to see what their hours were uh, to take my grandma later. What's, you know, what's up? Yeah, really suspicious. I just, I mean, if I'm driving around and I'm, an, I'm a cop, if there's anybody I want to pull over, it's definitely you. <laughs> but the thing is, is everything, I mean, my stuff's legit. It's up to date. It's, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm not going to combat the state on that level. You know, I hear in the UK, despite police there are you know yeah. people think, like to think of them as a police state in the UK I've heard several anecdotes of people who've gotten drunk you know Americans that have gotten drunk on the street mm -hmm. and the police will put them in the back of the car and drive them back to their hotel yeah I've I've heard those stories um, and it you know kind of used to be that way here yeah I was gonna say same thing. It's like, didn't they used to have that here where they would either sober you up, or yeah. back in the old days, the the, yeah, the, like the county the county sheriff would actually close up a road, and if you wanted the drag race, they would actually sanction it. Yeah, there was uh, you know once upon a time in a land that had some level of sanity, right? Um, but uh, it, but all is not lost uh, because it seems like now with uh, you know sort of this turning of the tide and. I personally, whether you put stock in it or not, I mean, I personally attribute a lot of it to um, sort of this shift in the Mayan calendar. I see, like, I looked at that, and there was kind of this big thing, and I look at that and kind of go, well, look at what happened. Um, you know, it was after that point where um, all the major research, uh, you know, polls and Gallup and Pew and things like that started coming forward and saying, okay, more people are getting their news online now than they are from, from you know, traditional avenues of television and print, right? And so that's a huge dynamic shift uh, where they're getting it from a free, fair, open environment 
rather than from uh, you know the AP and Reuters and stuff that the the Federal Reserve System or you know that they own. Um, Doesn't M MSNBC only average about 150 to 300,000 viewers a night, more or less? They um, the front a front page Reddit post will get more views than a uh, yeah CNN show, a primetime CNN show, no which kidding. is about half a million at most, unless there's a school shooting. Oh yeah, then everybody tunes into yeah. Exactly. Only Fox News crosses a million in <clears throat> some of their shows. Fox, well, Fox is kind of a huge. Um, they're they're a behemoth uh, when it comes to to you know news. Right? Now, would you would you consider um, Glenn Beck alternative media? Um, at this point, I think it's fair to say that he is. Um, honestly, I mean, is he on point with everything? And that you know, I debate for another day. The thing is, he's also very, very lucrative with it. I mean, he's made Forbes' top celebrity earners of 20... I think it was 2012 or 2013, mm -hmm. number 32. And even, uh, was it Matt Drudge, he, he... His website is one of the top traffic sites in the, in the uh, in, of, on all the internet and even mm -hmm. Infowars. Well, and this got is... A ton of and, it, and it alludes to something that's, that's kind of a big deal. Because this didn't really become a trend and become like a big thing until, you know, sometime into 2012, 2013. Um, you know, at least according to the polls and stuff, um, it was starting to gravitate that way as we crept up to it in, you know, 09 and 10 and so forth. But it really wasn't until after 2012 that we really started seeing that. And that's, you know, and, and kind of what I get at in, in the bookstore when people come in is um, that it's one of the three major pillars that you need to sort of run roughshod over the globe. If you have control of media, for example, um, that's a huge deal. You can control what people think effectively, um, you know, and uh, it, which is a which is an even huger deal because, it, you know, it's uh, I think it was Buddha who had said that we exist in a world of thought, um, meaning you know I mean before this broadcast could occur, you know somebody had to think for it to exist, but somebody had to think for the network to exist, and somebody had to think for you know I mean before we can even have a conversation outside of this. Our parents had to think, oh, you know, she looks kind of cute. Maybe I'll buy her a drink, right? Um, and so it's it's all this thought thing. And if you can affect that thought, you you you're literally molding and shaping the physical realities of the world around us. Um, and there you kind of start getting into almost a very matrix esque sort of um, thing that's happening. Um, and and they understand this, so they own the media. Um, we know. Uh, was it uh, one of the big ones that, that I kind of like to point to is uh, Re Texas Representative Oscar Calloway, right? Um, it was the, either Texas Congressional Records 1917 or 1918, where um, basically what he says, kind of paraphrasing in there, is that um, you know the the banking interests and the you know steel interests and these various um, you know major entities kind of got together to determine um, how many of the nation's newspapers would have to be bought and paid for to generally uh, determine or influence the opinions of the, the people daily. Um, and that was roughly what it said. Um, and of that, and he, and he goes on in there to say that of that, uh, it was determined that 25, uh, only 25 of the nation's leading papers would have to be bought and paid for, and that's what they did, and they furnished, furnished an editor to each and paid for it by the month, right? Um, and we see that repeated, like when the Texas tran the Trans Texas Corridor came in. Um, I think was it Centra? Do you, do you they remember? bought up a bunch of the, uh, the of the of the newspapers. Yeah, because the newspapers were screaming bloody murder about this. But well, Centra came along. I'm and I'm pretty sure it was Centra. I could be wrong. Well, but they, they came they, in and they bought all the newspapers along where the roads were going to be. Well, Oklahoma. The Oklahoma City bombing as well. Uh, if you look at our friends, uh, Holland uh, Vanden Neuenhoff and Wendy Painting, they were one of the researchers mm -hmm. on this documentary called The Noble Lie. And uh, there was this one uh, television station that was that kept asking all the hard questions right, and, and, and right. kept report, uh, you know, reporting what was reported on the first day. And then they got bought, got bought out by a conglomerate, and the station manager was quickly fired. And and so it's. It's one of those things where you know we understand that if you can control what people think um, or influence what people, you don't think. even have to necessarily have something as big like that anymore. A celebrity on Twitter getting retweeted tens, if not hundreds of thousands or millions of times, mm -hmm. has has nowadays more influence than even say the New York Times on some things, which is actually kind of interesting to think about. They don't have to have this big, huge thing. You just have to have one person that you make a world star. 
Um, and and yeah, no, to some extent, that's it's entirely true, and it has really changed the dynamic of the game. Um, but now that now that uh, you know where people get their information and how people get their information has changed. Um, it's it's that's part of the reason we see the upset we see. I mean, one of the big points that I like to use is the war in Syria. Um, Nine percent approval rating. By all accounts, it should have gone off without a hitch. Uh, he's a Hitler and he's gassing his own people and you know for God and puppies and whatever, right? And because uh, it was the exact same thing that they told us with Iraq, and we go in without and we go in without um, any kind of any kind of issue or anything. But we look at. Um, that major change, that's that's one of the major shifts, but, uh, you know, that 2012 thing, again, coming back to it, um, it's interesting. that's also when Bitcoin started to becoming a thing. I mean, yeah, granted it's around in 2009, but it didn't become a household name until, you know, well after the this whole, you know, two, you know until we came into 2012, 2013 when it started really kind of creeping out and people were like, oh, yeah, that, that digital currency thing, I've heard of that. Um, and now 2014, where it's kind of becoming, you know, sort of the year of the big boys with, you know, Overstock and Newegg and Expedia, and, you know, Direct TV now, uh, also. Dish. Uh, or not Direct Is TV. it not, is it Dish? Dish. Direct TV got bought up by AT&T. Okay. Uh, that's too bad. Um, what's that? Well, I, getting bought out. Oh, yeah. I mean, Comcast and Time Warner want to make a oh, merger now. Oh, that's horrible, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, what kind of monopoly is there on the internet? Yeah, and well, and this is actually that actually brings up something interesting that I do want to get to in another show at some point, whether whether it's on this broadcast or or the other one, um, this uh, project MeshNet, and that's something that you know a lot about. Um, it's something that is Spain, I believe. Yeah, big, right? in, big in Spain. Spain knows a lot about. Spain has the largest MeshNet. It's a couple and thousands of nodes, I believe. So I want to ex. For this, because when um, you know when the Bitcoin thing kind of came along, um, and I know I'm a little all over the board here. I think eventually it's, the show's just going to be called ADD Masterpiece Theater, right? Um, <laughs> but um, three ADD guys, one show. Uh, but uh, there you go. Yeah. Um, but to me, it seems like it really it really started to change the game i mean there was the whole um, you know sticking with that mind thing you know the media collapse and then and then there's a challenger to traditional avenues of money that comes in and you know if you're the person that understands that you have to have these three and then education of course being the final one and we now see that there is this huge boom in the uh, arena of getting your kids the hell out of the public education system um, you know i mean i have parents that come in and they want to, I would like to see a fund. I would like to see a, you know, just say no to school or get kids out of school fund. Like, you know, like pennies at the 7-Eleven when I go in and there's Jerry's kids. Like, I want the fund right next to it where I go in and I see it and I kind of go, oh, you know, maybe I'll chip in, you know, a couple of bucks to help get, you know, Timmy out of the public education system and into either a private school or homeschooled or, hell, just give him a Starbucks gift card and let him sit in a Barnes & Noble that has, a you know, a Starbucks in it and let him just pull books off the shelf and read. He's going to learn more that way than he is doing anything else. Good Will Hunting, as I referenced the last show. Uh, the, yeah. I, the ironic thing about the public school system is it's become such a cancer on society. The Some of the highest property tax, percent, top property tax percentages are coming from being taxed to fund these public schools, and then they mm -hmm. are going the route of Common Core, which is just According completely to the, backwards way of teaching. And, and according to the uh, Virginia senator, uh, it uh, was it a Virginia senator? Was that who it was? Uh, this one killed me, and I love this. And we'll just keep rifling ADD theater here. I'm feeling it. I'm liking it. So, um, but uh, according to him, it'll turn you gay. Uh, did you? Did anybody catch this? I this was a couple of weeks back. It was two or three weeks back. And it was like a Virginia senator or a representative. It was something like that, somewhere in you know that arena. And I could have the state and the title wrong, but if you Google, you know, U.S. representative says you know Common Core makes you gay. Um, you that's put, a thing. That's a thing that exists. That's a headline out sounds there. Sounds like something out of Alabama. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what what got me 
is that uh, and this this actually and, and and since we're on that point real quick core, yeah. um just on the and I do want to point out the, the and this is a point of that nobody brings up and I'm always surprised right the Republicans will come out and they always have this um thing that such and such and so and so makes you gay right oh, um here we go with that again no no it's um it's uh the you know it's uh Teletubbies are gonna make you gay and then Common Core is gonna make you gay and you know whatever well, that right? first one might might be true you know and it's plastic you know drinking bottles and you know so forth right and everything's gonna make you gay right right are right. these establishment or Tea Party guys because the chairman of the Texas Republican Party actually came out against the platform that was adopted uh, specifically his the previous chairman did a motion, uh, it was a parliamentary procedure that closed debates, uh, and he came out against a portion of the platform which uh, talked about uh, reparative therapy. And he, and right, he, actually, right, used, right. he actually used the, the analogy, uh, reparative therapy can't t- make a straight person and turn them gay, so how would you expect it to make a, a gay person straight? This is not something that should even be in the platform at all. Well, I mean, the platform shouldn't exist because the parties shouldn't exist because government shouldn't exist. But you, but you get but, where I'm coming from. Is that, um, yeah. I actually had a, I actually had a little bit of a joke on that topic at one point when it first came out. Um, Getting back to but, Common Core. And the, the, but, the, but before you derailed me here, the, the, um, but I see what you did. Yeah. Um, the, but they always say, this is going to make you gay, that's going to make you gay, this is going to make you gay, right? But I go, wait a minute, hold on. You're the same people that said being gay is a choice. Now, time out. If fill in the blank makes you gay, then that implies a certain lack of choice, right? The same choice that you say people make, you see what I'm saying? They say it at the same time. They go, this is going to make you gay, and it's your choice. Well, what are you talking about? That doesn't make any what? That doesn't make an ounce of sense. There's nobody, and, and I'm surprised nobody's called that. But um, <clears throat> anyway, the, but before uh, before that, and before everything else, <laughs> rewinding here, it is. It's ADD masterpiece theater tonight. Well, you think about it though. You know, before we leave, talk about public education. Is that even a generation ago, public education wasn't this disaster that it is currently. I mean, I'm a product of public education and a public university. Were you, uh, Ryan, were you part of a, a product of public education? Um, yes and no. Um, they tried, and I my, my problems with um, schooling and authority generally began in preschool. Um, that was when I first was uh, cutting class and first butting heads with authority. Um, so uh, the you know, and 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 it went on the whole time through. I mean, high school was a social function. I'd go, I'd show up, I'd you know, we'd smoke, and then I'd be like, okay, bye, I'm done. Um, like I'm gonna go to the arcade or uh, or go and sit in Barnes and Noble, and re- that's actually largely what I did. Now it's much different. Now you go to school, and I mean, you're pressured to go to college. It's all college, mm-hmm. college. You got to prepare for college. We need to prepare yeah. you. You're 14, and you need to prepare for college. <laughs> a lot of it's <laughs> actually like a prison. You know, these kids. They wear these IDs. The schools go on mm-hmm. lockdown every day. As soon as they close, as soon as the you know uh, the, uh, the bell rings till you, and if you leave, you're considered a truant, and mm-hmm. your parents actually can get uh, thrown in jail for uh, <laughs> if, you, if you skip too many days. So gotta get a truancy court. Yeah, that's why you just don't get your kids involved in this shit to begin with. Jonathan, were you were, were you punishing a... kids earlier and earlier? You know, getting the police involved in little petty matters with kindergarten. I can't, I can't even tell you how many. Were you or were you a product public school, Jonathan? Just. For... Yeah, yeah, I went to public school. I can't tell you how many I've seen with like tased eight-year-old kids. You know, I got caught know, over like not taking a bath, quote unquote, breaking into my school's computers, and they gave me a choice: they would expel <laughs> me or send me to college. So I went to college. That's, I always like how that works out. In situations, it's uh, yeah, do this or you know, um, but um, but getting back, you know, kind of at the core of what I was what I was getting on is I think that um, I'm cautiously optimistic um, with this direction that we're going um, because like while it seems like things are getting crazier and crazier right um, are they or is that the reality that is uh, that they want us to perceive uh, we know recently this article came out about um, basically how government was 
uh, getting involved in social media, right, and kind of controlling certain aspects of social media and trying to basically kind of experimenting on people and seeing kind of how they would react to certain things. So, the, you know, I mean, is it one of those I mean, things have where... have you ever seen BuzzFeed.com? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. think that there's not government behind BuzzFeed? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the, I mean, how many agents is it? It's like 600,000, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Just like, just, um, you know, internet agent that we know of, right, that are just trolls. 600,000. Yeah, it's like 600,000 just like internet trolls. Uh, that are paid for by the government. Yeah. And various government agents paying for them to go and look on forums and go on Reddit and leave nasty comments or like yeah. insti instigate like votes or try to sway public opinion. How much yeah. are they making a year? Why, are you thinking about flying? <laughs> you know... Um, but uh, no, but well, there's an well, easy way to fix that. Stop paying your tax. <laughs> it won't make any money a year. There's also that, and and it seems like we're be, and that's that's part of what gives me hope is that <clears throat> now with these pillars being disrupted, of global control, of control of media, control of finance, um, and now control of the education system. It it gives me hope because once you start disrupting that. Um, and the information flows freely, and the you know there's transparency and honesty and money and transactions. They they really can't run the games that they're accustomed to running, and so you know we see these projects starting to creep up and and come out. Um, I mean, what do you do when something like a dark coin or dark wallet? Um, you know, created by our friends Cody and and, and Amir and and you know Peter Todd and stuff like this. Um, what do you do when something like that kind of... Um... Well, we can see what they're doing as they're trying to link it to terrorism. I mean, the mostly... <coughs> that yeah. article that came out from Coindesk that mm -hmm. said that, uh, you know, ISIS was involved in Bitcoin and ISIS is using Bitcoin. It's a total hacket job. I mean, yeah. it's, Isn't, it's a false uh, flag. It's the very definition of a false flag. The The words that they use wouldn't aren't yeah. words that actual ISIS fighters would use. or mm -hmm. They're using like uh, outdated terms, and they're talking yeah. about regions that haven't existed since the <laughs> 70s. Oh, jeez. Like, it's just a really poor job, but they're going to try to link... I mean, Darkcoin is even mentioned in the article. Is it really? Yeah, Darkcoin is mentioned oh, in there. Bitcoin is mentioned in there. They're trying to do a wash job. That's yeah. Is, isn't ISIS nothing more than the Mujahideen Part 12? I mean, this is just straight out of... It's just they, more, they, yeah. they actually made a movie about it about seven or eight years ago called Charlie Wilson's War, which explains the whole thing. It's a study funded CIA-backed and... Didn't it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, organization. Um, and so, I mean, yeah. I mean, it really... Like, I looked at it, and I was like, it's just more... To try to get us into this new war. It's more al cia basically. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think what's interesting now is that when you talk to military, they they seem to know, uh, maybe not in full, but they seem to have a sense of what's going on. Um, I've got a number of friends that are you know active uh, military, whether it's you know rangers or as medics or <clears throat> um, you know what have you, and they the sentiment seems to be uh, roughly as much as or or more than fifty percent of them. Um, I it was more, much more than that. Are there? Well, I mean, if we take, uh, if we take, for example, the, um, it could be, and you could actually support that statement by looking at uh, the donation pool from the active duty military in 2012 to Ron Paul's campaign, or even 2008. Um, and and I know in 12 he pulled uh, more donations, um, right, from uh, the military than than. All the other candidates put together. Or if you look, getting back to the pillars, put together. If you get back to the pillars of media uh, with the Syria, uh, what was the thing that ultimately killed it is that when you had all those soldiers uh, tweeting that they were not going to go to war fighting alongside Al Qaeda. But getting back to what you were saying, you said at least fifty mm -hmm. percent of the soldiers have. But it seems like at least fifty percent of them are in the know. And this is part of the reason I feel fairly um, confident in it, is that um, because you have these different factions, and we've, we tried to talk about this a little bit last time, and we kind of bumbled around a bit. But um, there's this libertarian, um, constitutionalist, fetishist 
sort of um, group that exists, right, that, that is very pro-gun and sees the situation as being, well, uh, you know, get your gold and, and stock up on food and, you know, water and, you know, be self-sufficient when the time comes, you know, resist uh, resist tyranny to, to the fullest, right? And and there's that side. Um, there's And then there's sort of the, um, you know, the crypto-anarchist side of things, right? Um, but I don't know. It, it, it seems like um, it seems like there's this this element at play when you when you talk to him that, that chicken little thing that I was talking about because I'm trying to gather both my thoughts right now and then from what I had last week that I was kind of trying to get at. Um, the difference between anarchism and libertarianism. Is that what you're trying to get at? Well, I mean, there's that element. There's there's this group that thinks that it's going to go this way. And, and you know, certainly, you you know, the only thing that's ever stopped tyranny is defiance of tyranny. Well, here's, direct defiance here's of tyranny. Here's something that could... That, that, uh, not to say you got to yeah, throw a bunch of shoes at my face this week. <laughs> but here's something that will help get you focused. You have the Constitution, but the Constitution mm -hmm. was created in 1787. The Declaration of Independence was created in 1776, and shortly thereafter you had the Articles of Confederation, and it was argued that the Articles of Confederation was too limited. That's why they created the Constitution. So if you look at the Constitution and you look at the Articles, uh, excuse me, the uh, Declaration of Independence, you know, just ignore the uh, Articles of Confederation, uh, you have 11 years difference, and you have a very, very, very different document that the Declaration of Independence was much more of a libertarian and freedom-based and patriotic document, if you think about it, because the Const what's in the Constitution, it structures the, all the branches, what they can and can't do, and it really doesn't state any liberties or anything except in <clears throat> the first ten amendments, which right. are the Bill of Rights. So, and, roll with that. Right, but... Um, the but the thing is with that is is that um, you know you have this this sort of constitutionalist fetishist thing which is which is fine it's a great piece of work um, and there's some you know and they they were really trying to work towards something especially you know your anti federalists right right um, but it, clearly it didn't work um, you know, and clearly all the various processes, the protests and the, um, you know, runnings for office and the voting and the, you know, petitioning and, you know, it's, and all the different things that they offer for us um, clearly don't do the job because they haven't slowed it down an ounce. As no, it's the Declaration gained. of Independence was um, was was con enacted because of a 2.5% tax by the king and now we have... Oh, yeah. Yeah, now it's, what, like 50, 60, you know, whatever, depending on what bracket and who you talk to and, you know, whether they're a business owner, right? Um, to get into that, I mean, we're born into... I wasn't given a choice about yeah. me paying taxes when I was born. We, I, yeah. I don't remember voting on this, okay? Mm -hmm. The people that represented me, that supposedly before I was born in the 19, early 1900s when, mm -hmm. when this was all put together... Like how how did they represent me at all? How yeah. how how does any of this represent me? How does it represent any of us? Yeah. Um, no, we're, there's. We're born into this. You no, know, it's a thing that you're born into, and there is no representation, and it's a and it's a absolute farce from the get go. I mean, the the idea that it's representation. Well, now wait a minute. You represent me through what? Through your words or through your deeds or, you know, well we represent you through what we do and blah blah blah. But what you do is you steal. And you kill, and uh, you know you maim, and and these other wide variety of things, right? Um, all things that I never had a right to do. So where did you get this right? I mean, the in there it says that uh, you know effectively that uh, the the rights not delegated, uh, you know, that, and that that's where they get their their powers, right? Is from the people. Well, how, where did you get this one? Which person had the power? Like, which one was it? Was it you? Are you the one that has the power to murder? Is it? I, mean, I know it's not me. Like I'm, I'm like. If you want to vote on it, I'm a hundred. <laughs> I'm a hundred and ten percent certain that if 
go out and kill somebody, that um, bad things will befall me. Unless you put a badge on. Right. See, and yeah, exactly. And that's... So where did it come or, from? Or, no... or you're very, very, very wealthy to buy off the entities that are supposed to uh, sworn to protect and uphold the law and the right. Constitution. But that's a... Saying is that it's it's all it's all a load of rubbish no matter what angle you take it from. I mean, people ask you know what do you do for a living? I go well I sell anarchy, right? Um, they come to the bookstore and they go well, but no, you have to have some level of you know and a night watchman and blah blah blah. And I'm like, there's no rational angle where that makes sense, man. Like why? Well, because you know people might steal or they might rob or they might okay right. Some people might steal or rob. Um, Oh man, that actually reminds me. Remind me to get into that thing about uh, the purge, uh, if anybody remembers later. I, I will. You mean the movie? Yeah. Remind me. You're good with cinema. Remind me to get into that because I was something. Remind that... me also to get into the whole <coughs> film subsidy thing too. No, well, I'm not trading. Just do I, 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 the um. Yeah. But uh, not like I, I'm not like trading my fruit cup for your pudding I mean, pack. If there was one. If I had one day out of the year <laughs> where I could do anything legal. Anything illegal, mm -hmm. I'd probably grow a garden in my front yard. Yeah, see, exactly. That's and yeah, because you have to have permits for that, and you got to cut hair. I was cutting my hair the other day, actually. I cut my own hair, right? And I was thinking about it. I was like, wait, wait a minute. Do I, I need to, to New have Jersey a? Do I, I need to have a permit? Own, yeah. Do I need to have a permit to um, you know, you have to have a permit to cut hair. Do I have to have a permit to cut my own hair? Wait, Jersey too? Yeah, Jersey, Oregon's or another one. Oregon, but the thing of Oregon is that you can pump diesel, but you cannot pump your own gas. Diesel's fine, gas is not. But God forbid we have to keep uh, all these gas, these servicemen that pump your gas employed, right? So because that, that is a life skill. Yeah, well, it's well, terrifying. Well, I mean, you go to college for that kind of stuff these days. Here's some interest. If you look at the states that have bad gun laws, it's almost as if it's protectionist for the bodyguard industry. Think about it. Hmm. Um. How much is a bodyguard? Two hundred fifty thousand a year, potentially. Some yeah, of them. It's kind of expensive. I like that you've shopped them. Can you get one on the Silk Road? <laughs> like he's just got prices. He's just got the prices rolling around in his head. Where did you get that number? Do you really have you looked at this stuff? I actually have. And there's actually several videos on YouTube. Which how do you know this stuff? Because if whenever I have to do a trip out to California, I can't bring my <laughs> my firearm because they don't recognize rec they don't recognize my CHL. They don't oh, recognize man. any. St oh god. Okay, wait, wait. wait. So, so they don't see, bodyguard is two hundred fifty thousand a well, year. How much is it to have a mariachi band follow me around? I like that so much better. Brother, have they take the bullet for me? Well, I also think that if you have a mariachi band following you around, I think you're probably even less likely to be screwed with. Yeah. Because the psychological, like, you know, bodyguard, okay, great, got to, got to deal with. Mariachi band, you don't know what the hell's going on. Got to be the crazy like, one. Like, you don't know. Like, are they all bodyguards? Is he just, like, is... Is this, like, Desperado? Is a trap? Yeah, what's going on? I don't know. The guy's got a mariachis. I've, I'm out of here. Like, job's off, you know? Um... But uh, anyway, the, no, the whole um, fuck it, yeah, we'll go with the purge thing. The God, purge. I can't, I'm, All right, <sighs> man. Um, this is actually. Do you have a beer? Just it, go with it. Do you have a beer? Can I have no, I don't want that beer. Yeah, don't. That's beer. Okay, I'm gonna take your beer. Um, do you want me to get your beer? No, we'll get a beer later. Uh, but uh, it, it, it helps me focus. It's like I've discovered that uh, with the ADD thing, like uh, with the combination of whiskey and cigarettes. Um, it's like a hyper focus. It's a very manly thing. There's a hyper focus that happens. If I've got those two things going on, I can maintain on the same damn topic, like a, I mean, just like a missile on target, man. Just you know, for someone who, for someone who hates the state, you are a born politician. I mean, honestly, I mean, <laughs> how am I a? Okay. Well, don't the, don't the old politicians they have they switch back here. They uh, they drink whiskey, whiskey, smoke cigars, have yeah, a monocle and a top hat. So everybody. Do, so do slave owners. <clears throat> I think you're onto something here. Well, they're one and the same. Politicians and slave owners, right? Um, because I mean, it's just a it's a, just a big you know uh, as Molyneux gets at you know human farm, right? Um, and but uh, the I'm just gonna run with the purge. What the hell? I'm all over the place tonight. Um, the uh, but somebody actually brought that up to me recently, and uh, to me, there's like it, it bothered me when that movie came out, um, because I looked at it and I'm like, okay, I didn't even bother to go see it. 
Um, and maybe I should. I don't know. But the sequel's coming out. Yeah, in a couple and, of weeks. and so I guess that's why we're talking about it here now. But the original one, right, they, it's, oh, okay, the basic premise is, okay, so uh, government's just going to go ahead and we're going to shut down shop for the night. I don't know, you know, whatever the reasoning is. And uh, no more protectionist services and no EMS or hospitals. It, it's or, meant for people <clears throat> to blow their steam. Yeah, so it's it's like a, you know, and, and they basically, it's like a hit piece on, on, the, on, on the concept of anarchy. But it ignores all this shit from the get-go, and so I couldn't even go see it, because I'm like, okay, where do we start? Um, the fact that, um, the fact that, uh, Leland, just let me, okay. please, man. Okay. Um, the, where, so where do we start? I mean, so for example, first of all, if the concept is if there's no government, then there's zero protection of services. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm fairly certain that like there's armed security and patrols and bodyguards and just a neighborhood watch with a bunch of guys with baseball bats. And so they get on, you know, so there's that whole issue. It's like, and I've done the math. You take 40 houses on a block on average, do four blocks, it's 160 houses at $20 per hour at 24 hours a day, ends up being like less than $3 per household that you're paying to have a guy with a gun walk around and go, anybody getting raped? Anybody getting robbed? All right, everything looks good here. Have a nice day, Mrs. Johnson. Like, and he's not going to do anything that you wouldn't do to your boss because you're his boss. You're the guy's boss. You're not going to show up at his kid's eighth birthday party and shoot the service dog. You're not going to blow off a you know shotgun on a box full of kittens and say they're going to kitty heaven. You're not going to you know what like you're not going to do that. Like because if you did that in, to your boss, like you probably would get fired and 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 other things, right? Um, and so there's that whole and so it ignores this whole big thing that like. Surely people would go, oh, hey, uh, it's coming about, right? Um, I think there's going to be a bunch of uh, nerdy wells. Uh, maybe we should get together and, you know, uh, here's a baseball bat. i got a torch. All right. Like, it ignores that whole basic premise of, like, that people would act like rational, you know, and and so there's that problem. Uh, and that, that that there's market solutions. The other problem that it gets at is the uh, – that, that bothered me – quite a bit about it is that um, it, it, it ignores the uh, or well well uh, even starting before that the protagonists right that takes the protagonist side of things and it goes okay right it's it's a movie that is aimed to make money and so you want to have some relation with the main characters you want to have a rapport you want to feel their pain and you want to you know what I mean relate to the main characters. And so they do that with movies, right? And so the the protagonists, what do they do? Like they don't go out on a killing spree. They don't go out and do it. They hunker down. They just go, oh, bit of a shit storm coming. All right, uh, get the kids, and uh, I'll get the guns, and we'll go hide out in the you know closet or whatever, right? Which tells me that if it's a movie that you know you're aiming to sell to the masses, that's what the masses are gonna do. Like, you know, otherwise you'd make it about the violent band of marauders in the night, you know? like That's what the second one I think's about. I actually saw the first well, one. Well, the second one, like, he gets in on the action. Like, I guess, like, they well, kill his well, kid. Well, or I, actually, I actually saw the first one. I didn't like it for different reasons. It was done on a low budget, which... So he had one location. And it actually did touch upon what you were saying with private security, that the guy, the main protagonist family mm -hmm. sold these armor plates that went over the doors and made a, a good chunk of money off it. problem is they really didn't work, so it was really easy to break into the house. And there was the moral thing where the reason why this gang went into the house was because the kid had a conscience and harbored a homeless person. That's what they did, is it basically says... Okay, so the government lets you have this purge that society is inherently not moralistic, so they go and beat homeless people. And so they take them in. And I don't, like, what the hell's going to, like, if you beat a hobo today, like, I, what are you going to, like, you're going to spend, like, maybe a couple of nights in, in the pokey or something? Like, what are you going to, like, there, you know what I mean? It's not like there's, like, a big family it, it, it that's was pressing a, it, charges. It was, it was, it was, it was pl a plotting plot. So. I'm just saying there's a shitload of problems with it that, that bothered me. And then for and then there's the big underlying point. You know, I'm like saving that part. There's 
So it ignores the fact that the protagonists aren't going to be as you know assailing others. It ignores the numbers issue because it makes it out like the streets just flooding with marauders, right? When really it's like maybe one to maximum three percent of society that falls into that category that would actually. Um, it ignores the you know this whole idea that well, in the movie is it the first one not not the first movie but is it the first time they have this purge is that no it, it okay so it's happened before oh yeah there's a whole so all the guys that are gonna go out and run in the streets right probably have been around before that or they're all you know six years old it's actually a lot like the Hunger Games where it's a yearly ritual I don't I don't know anything about it I don't I, don't I mean that's what they attention. basically turned it into is a yearly ritual. I've, Zero attention to to that at all, and maybe I should. I don't know. What we need is a battle royale. <clears throat> battle royale. Which one was that? You've never seen battle royale. I'm honestly, I'm. This is this part is, of the reason why me and are terrible. He's a cinema nut, and I know dick about movies. It's the Japanese movie where like high school kids get taken to the island and they have to <coughs> fight each other in the last one. Oh, yeah, they did a terrible wins. remake with Steve Austin. It sounds like The Fly. It's or, it's Hunger Games. Flies. It's like it's like they're Hunger Games. Well, the first Same Hunger movie. Games wasn't bad. I mean, uh, but it was Gary Ross was a better director than uh, okay. Francis Lawrence. But but the the thing with the Purge, getting back to it, the there's just all this fucking problem with the whole story, right? And then, but it it the thing that gets me is that it ignores the biggest issue of all, and it what it paints is this picture that government is the protection. Uh, the saviors, they're the good guys. We make sure that no violent marauders come into your house. And oh, and you couldn't blah, kill blah blah blah. You couldn't kill government officials. That okay. was yeah. You know, so that was the one rule. Um, oh come on. And if there's... yeah, <laughs> but there. the um, but getting back to it, the um, see Leland, you I, I'm off kilter again. Um, what the fuck was I saying? The biggest uh, thing that you're right. saying. Right. Fuck. Thank you, man. You see what I'm saying? Is right? that only three percent of society? No, that's not what I was saying. The what I was saying is that the biggest thing it, it we've got this you know the government is protection and blah blah blah, and they kind of ignore the fact that um that that's not the case at all. Uh, if you compare the number of uh, murders done by Joe Average and, um, you know, street gangs and, you know, shit like this, right? And then you compare the number of people that government has killed, um, you know, and we can, go, we can go crazy. We can exclude wars uh, where, you know, that we killed other people. We can exclude wars where our own people were killed in the war. We can just, just governments feasting on their own. There's no comparison. There's, like, fucking far and away. Um, and so it completely ignores that element, that, like, no, historically, government is the one that kills the people, not the people killing the people. Um, and, and, that kinda, and that's part of the thing that kind of irks me, is that it ignores this whole idea that the worst-case scenario in an anarchistic situation is exactly the situation we're living in now. Um, because you have, okay, great, here's full-blown anarchy, right? No rules, no, nothing. You have that marauder mentality, that marauding group, the the Vikings that, you know, come in and storm the whatever and take whatever they want and, you know, um, you know and rape the horses and, you know, kill the women, whatever, right? And it ignores this idea that they're going to get smarter as time goes on. It ignores this idea that they're going to go, well, you know what, instead of, um, you know, taking um, everything, why don't we just take a portion of their production and then, uh, you know, we can come back and do it again. And then, you know, of course, they're going to get in more intelligent and they're going to move in amongst. That way there's no, you know, they always know what you're up to, right? And there's no, like, you know, defending and digging, you know, trenches, you know, so the horses fall in when you go to Maraud and... and Whatever, <clears throat> and um, and then there's the and then they they're gonna get even smarter and they're gonna um have a dependency factor. They're gonna say, oh right, well I see you producing and I know that we're terrible, um, but there's some even more terrible guys that live uh you know uh across the river, and if uh you know we'll we'll protect you from them because yeah sure we beat you on the head with sticks, but uh they poke you in the eye with sharp sticks. And, uh, you know, and they just don't stop, right? So they're far worse. 
and so we're going to protect you from them. And a uh, good bit of good news, uh, we also went ahead and built a slide, uh, and your kid can ride on the slide all day long so that you can, you know, uh, plant more potatoes or, you know, sow, sow more clothes or whatever it is you do. Um, and and so eventually it becomes that sort of Stockholm thing, and they go, well, but, you know, without, you know, the violent marauders uh, that, you know, only take a small portion of our stuff or a, you know, grow over growing portion of our stuff, who would protect us from the... Uh, terrible across the river pokey sticky eye people and who would uh, you know put our kids on slides and you know on and on and on and that's where we're at now like the worst case result in in a fully blown anarchistic society the worst case thing that ends up happening is this I think where you we end, are now you end up with government is uh, governments realizing that if people get collective and we start working together and mm -hmm. people rise up some together uh, power in numbers the government government's afraid of people uniting. Oh yeah. They don't, they want they don't want people to unite. So they sit sit around and they think, hmm, we can make them how about we make them hate each other for the color of their skin? Oh yeah, you can divide people. Why don't Absolutely. we hate them for their beliefs? Divide them for their beliefs. Make them hate each other. That's what we need. We need to make them hate yep. each other. What do you got? Something dang between your legs and you don't? Yeah, that's grounds to hate. Uh you know, what do you got? Darker pigmented yeah, shit, hate away. Uh, what's he got? Two, two more dollars than you? Shit, that's that's reason for war. He doesn't eat meat. It's uh, yeah, he didn't eat meat. Or what is she? She's uh twenty years uh, younger than you. Ah, there you go. Here's a sharp stick for her eyes. You know, it's just like, well, no, not you know. And that's my thing is like I don't, I've never really grasp that concept like I mean it's like like even as a kid like I would approach my parents told me about this even as a kid I would approach adults in any given capacity whether they were you know like panhandling or whether they were like judges or cops or you know what I mean and like I would have like adult conversations with them um, you know and I would like call them on shit too as a kid um, I'd be curious to know more about Same it here. like yeah. but the but the thing was is um but, uh, like I tell people when they come in, so it's like, I've never really grasped that concept. Like, I mean, okay, sure, you're different. If, um, you know, like if somebody walks through the wall to have the conversation with me, not like the Kool-Aid man, but like, you know, like just, and you know, or they just teleport into existence or they you know, fly down from the heavens and land before me, like, okay, shit, I guess we'll have that conversation. You you know what I mean? Like, you might be better. There might be some hierarchy here going on. But I've yet to see that. I've yet to have anybody just, <laughs> like, hey, wanted to talk to you about, like, whoa, where did you come from? I've never had that happen. And so until means, then... Uh, you're taking drugs. Well... <laughs> Which, of course, I mean, I always do encourage people, um, mushrooms, you know. Uh, I'm done. Uh, I, w I won't ever touch them again myself, but... Um, the opportunity uh, comes up, don't turn it down. But if you haven't done them, uh, yeah, there's something to be said for that. And this is actually something I kind of touched on a little bit the last time, is the um, this whole concept of, of death, right? Uh, we touched a little bit on this, and maybe we can kind of circle back on it a little bit. But um, regardless in the circles, whether it's the libertarians, whether it's the crypto-anarchist side of things, right, uh, there's always sort of this fear that um, that there's there's death, right? And to me, I look at it, and it's like, well, that's one way we can look at it, sure. Um, but I think there's something about mushrooms that kind of relieves that. Um, and I think maybe that's why they don't want you doing them, is because you end up coming to this realization uh, that you are kind of one with everything, that you are infinite in nature, uh, and uh, you know that it goes on after after the you know after the you know little meat ride right it, it goes on, and and they don't want you understanding that because then they can't threaten you with death, and well, fuck, if we can't threaten you with death, how do we get a free population to the position of servitude that it's in now? You can't. You have to, you've got to be able to point guns at them and say, you do what I say or else. Wooga, booga, 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 right? But if you go wooga, booga, booga, and the guy on the other side goes, well, I'm fucking shit, or get off the pot. You know what I mean? It becomes impotent. It becomes ineffective. And that's why they don't want you doing these things is because you figure that out and you just kind of go like... 
okay, wait, you're pointing the thing at me. The story ends, I die either way, right? Okay, great, and I don't know when or how. No, I only got to do it once, don't got to do it right, and I don't have to clean up the mess when I'm done. Great! What's the big fucking deal then? Why is this such a, you know what I mean? Like, and so that's kind of that's kind of the angle that I kind of approach it from, is it's like, let's take the anxiety out of this, please. Because there's it's not that big of a deal. It really isn't. Um, and, and, you know, for the atheist side of things and everything else, I just, I'm sorry, but I can't fucking get on board, man. I really can't. I, to me, I think it takes a huge amount of hubris and an enormous fucking set of balls to come out and go, okay, right, um, <clears throat> so... I see all the astral projection and the out-of-body experiences and the ghost stories and the uh, you know night terrors and stories of demons and angels and I see uh, every single major religion that's ever fucking existed on the planet and I see uh, you know psychics and mediums and uh, all this stuff right and it's all a bunch of bullshit uh, because I know things like. Because I read this book. Yeah, because I read some things, or you know what I mean? And I'm just like, dude, I'm, but for me, you know, it's it's more like 9-11. Uh, I look at it, and it's like there's sort of the official story, right? And they kind of, you know, maybe the official story is like, you know, oh, you die and you turn into warm food. Okay, great. But what about this ever-growing mountain of evidence? A reincarnation, there's another one, right? The, the, did you hear about that? The kid, mm-hmm. yeah, and he the gets kid. the hatchet, the fuck birthmark in his head, and he goes, oh, yeah, I used to be Mr. So-and-so. Guy killed me with a hatchet and buried me over here, and they dig it up, and there's a fucking skeleton with a fucking hatchet mark in it through its head. What the? F- How do you explain that? Like, surely somebody would have noticed a six-year-old kid cutting class and going and paying off a, like somebody like a cadaver, you know, a, a paying for a cadaver and then digging a hole and burying it, and you know what? Like, surely somebody would have pieced this together. Uh, like, hey, there's a six-year-old. He came by, uh, gave me twenty bucks. I gave him a, gave him a, gave him a body. Like, you know what I mean? Like, somebody would notice this, surely. Um, so how else do you explain all this shit? Like, Mushrooms. You, you can't explain all that stuff away. You just can't, man. It's too much shit to just write everything off. It really is. And here's the real fucking kicker. Suppose you can. Let's just assume you, you know, let's just go nuts. Fucking, there you go, sure, you can do that. You know, you can fly and you can, you know what I mean? You can write all that stuff off. Great. Um, oh, that reminds me of an article I saw today about atheists. Remind me to tell you that. Um, suppose you can. What's the worst case scenario? Again, the worst case scenario is you ended up with a bunch of people that you couldn't threaten with death, and if you can't threaten them with death, then you... you then what? You know? I mean, because that's that's the tool of, of evil men is, you know, that to threaten the the right to life that others have and to use that as a means of extortion. Well that's why I use that Blues Brothers analogy all the time. Um but the and it and it derails me every time, dude. Um but I get it. I do. Threatening your life your right yeah. to life. Over yeah, speeding tickets, right? The um, but that's why I encourage that because I mean, from my angle, like then you know what are you gonna do? Martial law and you're gonna guys with then you know, dude, bring it on, man. Fucking, you know what I mean? Like whatever, because there's like what are you gonna do? Like you know, a bullet and then it goes bang and you know, right? And then I get up and I go. All right, cool. Uh, you know, I got some family that I haven't seen in a little while, and some probably some pretty interesting people to go meet. So, peace out. Um, I think that we turn into lizard people. <laughs> you know, this is not the first time lizard people have opened the conversation today. <laughs> you know, the guys in Nintendo have with Super Mario Brothers the whole thing you're talking about mushrooms. The fact that he, the guy, was it Mario? He get, he takes the yeah, mushroom, he, he gets mushroom bigger, bigger, and then he and then he jumps all over the place, and he doesn't have any fear of death. So <laughs> it's kind of crazy that Nintendo had this thirty years ago, the same uh, mindset that you do have right now. That uh, like, that's I don't know that it's necessarily a Ken Leland, but uh, you know I but it has caused that, magic mushrooms. But it has been cause for wonder for me. Um, the Actually, the concept of magic mushrooms comes 
from uh, Scarian tribes. Um, is that where it originated from? Yeah, the Amanita muscaria mushrooms, like the red mushrooms with the white dots on them. I feel like I should have finished up my that Terrence McKenna. Well, but, here's the kicker: yeah. like in order to actually like get the hallucinations out of the mushrooms, the, the shaman would eat all the mushrooms. But it's not hallucinogenic by eating them. Mm -hmm. The way that it's hallucinogenic is when you urinate. And so the shot, they would all get together in really? this big like ritual or whatever, and the shaman would eat all these mushrooms and then pee into a, I guess a bowl or something, and they would all drink it and get hallucinate. Wow, that's some bullshit. So, I mean, but I guess yeah, anything for a trip, right? You lick frogs, uh, you know, whatever. Do you prescribe to the? theory that we only used was about 10% of our brains, because there's this movie that's coming out uh, later this summer. It has uh, Morgan Freeman in it. No. I keep I keep forgetting the name of the, of the movie, but it's it, the main character. It's like he, she starts using more percentage of her brain. She's able to control matter and I DNA. I think that it's at any given time, but we... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, right. it's at any given time. You only So it's not like, it's not like, you know, somebody came along a lot, you know, picked up 10% of the block and said, okay, great, this is where I'm setting up camp, and the rest of it's just dormant, right? It's just that at any given time. Now, you know, what happens if, you know, you have somebody that's capable of using, you know, 50, 60, 100% of their brain all at once? I don't know. But um, but I do think that, um, and, and maybe it has something to do, and this was a conversation we were having earlier today um, with somebody in the bookstore, um, is this concept of uh, ego, and this does tie into the mushroom thing, because it it you shed ego when that happens. Like at a certain point, you're just like, like you take them, and all of a sudden you become Plato. You're just like you like you walk away from it, and you're like, damn, I don't know shit. <laughs> like you know, um, it has kind of that effect. Uh, the well, I mean, even think about it. To go back, to his brain tangent. Um, yeah. You don't need your whole brain to survive. I mean, there are people that have had yeah. half their brains removed and are still alive and are still, like, coherent and they can still go and function day to day. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, some of them have lived rather productive lives with whole portions of their brain removed. Oh, yeah. So... The... Well, and, and I think that it's... Um, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, and I don't think you do, but I do wonder if, um, you know, maybe it has something to do with... Um, sort of reception, right? We were having this dialogue today because it does allow you to shed, because the mushroom thing, it does allow you to shed ego. And there is something to be said for that because when you shed ego, right, the there's this sense, right? People will say, oh, you know, astrology is bull and, um, you know, all these different things are bull, right? Ghosts and, um, you know, the paranormal and, uh, you know, magic and, and, and so on and so forth. It's all a bunch of malarkey, right? Um, and it's like, okay, well, maybe, um, but this is because, you know, it's always based on sensory stuff, right, and stuff that science has, you know, decreed and so forth, right, and I kind of look at it and I'm like, yeah, but, uh, you know, just because you can't see it or taste it or touch it or smell it, you know, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, um, and that seems to be the approach and the angle that they take, and it's like, well, surely you can't think that way. You know, just because it's beyond your capacity to see doesn't mean it's not there. Um, I mean, you know, if that's the logic, then I should be able to swing by for dinner at 8 and, uh, you know, uh, get a full belly and then pull out of my pocket my uh, dog whistle and just chase the shit out of your dog all over the house, just blowing on this thing. You can't hear it, so it must not exist, but you're probably going to not invite me back next time, you know? Like, you're probably going to have something sour to say if I do that. Um, you know, you're not going to let me put a blindfold on you and go, okay, great, now run full tilt uh, in a room that you know has four walls. On this, on this tangent of if you can't see it, then it doesn't exist. I mean, what about, like, DMT? When people smoke DMT or they drink mm -hmm. ayahuasca, there's that shared hallucination of where they're traveling through a wormhole and they uh, they come across these gnomes. Oh, yeah, yeah, a them. lot of people have that. They describe the gnomes and the gnomes are like the caretakers of the wormholes that connect the dimensions mm -hmm. between universes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people describe the gnomes and having the conversation with them. Salvia, interestingly, is a very similar um, thing. People always describe kind of, and not that I would ever compare the two. Yeah, like but, being sucked backwards. But you get sucked backwards, yeah. Um, you know, and I, I tried that, and, I, you know, I was just like, okay, that was weird. 
um, yeah, you kind of, it was like up to the mountaintop and then whoosh, back down. And then you kind of get like rippled through this like thing. Another and thing people back have, where you're at. have with Salvia is they describe a feminine presence. Like yeah. they always describe yeah. like there's a woman in the room or there's a very yeah. feminine presence around. Yeah. And it's, it's a really weird uh, thing. But when it comes to, but mushrooms take the cake, man. Fuck those things take the cake. Um, you know, and, and if you're going to do it, do it, you know, smart and, and you know, have well, you sober know, orbits, you know, keep I'm sure you know the, uh, all that shit. The stone theory. Terrence McKenna? Uh, re- which one was this? Refresh me. I mean, I've gone over my McKenna. And, uh, yeah, so Terrence McKenna's revival and... stone ape theory that, uh, you know, back, uh, back when we were all still apes, oh, uh, we, we ate, we found some magic mushrooms in the forest and we ate these mushrooms yeah. and it allowed us to, like, to have creative creativity and to imagine shapes that we had never comprehended before, and imagine new concepts, mm-hmm. and it allowed our minds to evolve. Yeah. No, I remember that one. I think it was in. Um, so, do you think the it reason- was either in True Hallucinations or the Archaic Revival? So, do you, do you think the reason why a lot of these controlled substances are made illegal by the state is to prevent? society from evolving and improving. I uh, no, I really do. I think that it, it makes you less manageable. I don't, is I what don't, it is. I don't even know if they're doing it purposely. If they're well, just arrogant about it. Well, Salvia just... is not illegal. So I think it's no, I think it has it is. become it is lately. Now. It, it is, is now. It, it, well, as of recently, yeah. Um and but the thing is is it, I, I do think so, Leland. Um because when you go up the the power structure, right? Right. There's a certain point where our friends in the world of, um, you know, uh, conspiracy, not conspiracy, but uh, occultism, there's a certain place where they come into play at certain echelons of the power dynamic. And so now we get into the Illuminati and the Bohemian Grove, and there's, you know, all these different, but uh, occultist sort of things going on, right? And when we... And, and when we look at that, we get the sense, and I'm not saying we have to really examine it in great detail. We can just look at it enough to go, okay, these guys are into some occult shit, right? They are into some, you know, extra dimensional and, you know, these kinds of, these kinds of things. And you have to think that if they're aware that this stuff exists, you know, like it would serve them well that you didn't. Um, that you didn't know that there is more to life. And if you look at all these, uh, all these world leaders, more or less, they all admitted they've done coke, weed, who knows what. Oh, yeah, also yeah. the heads of, a lot of heads of the entertainment industry, but as they well didn't as the... Inhale, as this... right? <laughs> no, along with well, it, occult thing, I mean, I don't think that uh, when you say occult that it's necessarily a bad thing. I think that there are different dynamics oh, yeah, and yeah. Different, different sides to that, but I think mm-hmm. that just studying the occult is it necessarily... Uh, well, occult, necess- yeah, it kind of... Get- Bad rap kind of like the word anarchy. And none it, of them it can be, but it doesn't have to be. And right. and none of them get a hard uh, justice sentence for substance abuse. None of them. D- they could do DWIs. Right, right, right. They could do all these hard drugs, and the worst thing they get is uh, rehab and uh, cannon father for TMZ. That's it. And this no, affluenza. No, no, no. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The. <laughs> Let's see that. Uh, but. Uh, but there is some to it, and and I think that when it because it does make you less manageable because you start to have certain um, you start to recognize certain truths. Um, there, one of the things I was going to mention, there was an article that came out today on the uh, on the atheist thing that I was mentioning earlier, um, and I haven't read it yet, but it's kind of an interesting headline, and I want to go back and check it out. But it's something to the effect of um, scientists discover that atheists don't exist. No, really. And that's like the headline title, right? And it had something to do with um, what is described as sort of the spiritual or God and then it kind of overlapping with what is literature, right? And and the appreciation for intelligence and how there's sort of this overlap and how... And I guess that that's kind of... Have you ever heard of the the God Machine? It's this uh, project that I think it was at Stanford, if I remember correctly, at Stanford, uh, they made this machine that would trigger certain portions of the brain mm-hmm. with, uh, I guess, electric shock. I, I don't, I don't yeah. know. I think it was maybe even magnetics they used to, to trigger certain parts of the brain. 
And when they would sit people in the room and they would put this big helmet on their head and they would trigger, mm -hmm. you know, a portion of the brain, they came to this one portion where people would have hallucinations about, like, their religion. Like, people who were Christian would see, like, hmm. Jesus or see, like, Jesus on the cross. Or people who were atheists would describe, like, UFOs they would start seeing. Huh. Some people would see angels in the room. Or some people would see, like, aliens standing in the room no just kidding. by triggering this one part of the brain. That's that's a fascinating. I want to, if you have stuff on that, I'd love to read about it. Um, I mean, I've heard of it before, but I hadn't given it a lot of... I mean, I want to build one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, who needs drugs when you can have Stanford, right? Yeah, make the, a Kickstarter uh, for that. There we go. That's a Kickstarter. Well, also, I, yeah, I, I think, honestly, I'm probably more like to pursue the, uh, um, the, the uh, earthquake machine first. Tesla's earthquake machine. <laughs> Um, so there was that article, uh, you know, and I just wanted to throw that out there because that was kind of an interesting bit. Um, but, but I do think that there's there's something to be said for it, and that's part of the reason I do encourage that is that, um, and there's a lot of there's a lot of benefit to it. The the independent research studies that they've done um, show uh, they've cured PTSD in people with it. They've given it to people um, where one of the in a couple. Where somebody uh, has a malignant, um, you know, stage for whatever type of cancer situation, um, they've given it to both people in the couple, and the process—it's taken the pain out of the process for them. Um, and so, you know, you kind of have to wonder, um, you know, kind of what's going on there. And, and um, I think it's—I think it's certainly something that uh, perhaps doesn't get enough. Um, Attention or credit, uh, because I mean, even if even if it's it's um, even if you can't explain away everything, again, like I said, I mean, what's the worst case outcome? It's just like buying, uh, you know, storable foods or you know, ammunition or something like that. Like, what's the worst case? Like, are you really blowing your money? Like, I mean, if you buy storable foods, right? The worst case scenario is you bought something that you can eat later when uh, inflation caught. You know what I mean? Like, it's a win. Even in the worst case, and so if it's a win, even in the worst case, then how does that not make sense? And so it's something that I kind of like to put, you know, impress on people is like, well, <clears throat> but it also makes you, it, I think it also allows you for clear thinking um, in your actions. Um, there is a samurai element to it, I think. The, you know, kind of when you look at, like the Hagakure, right, or something like that. Um, these guys sort of, they live from the grave uh, as though they're already dead. And that's that's the position that they live from, is recognizing, like, it's already a thing, it's already happened, it's, you know, it's already there. And so they kind of live their life from that position. I think it allows you to live kind of a full life, but it also makes you effective, um, you know, as far as, you know, if you're going to be, working towards, you know, freedom and, you know, truth and, and you know, liberty and the basic tenets of, of self-ownership for, for all mankind, um, doesn't it make you more effective? Doesn't it make you more clear thinking and reasoning? Um, because it abolishes fear from the mind. It's an honor thing. I mean, if you look at 100 years ago, like with the, the whole myth of the Titanic where it's everyone says be British, women and children first. The men went out with dignity. Mm -hmm. Now you're viewed as a chicken shit if you actually try to <laughs> save your life versus uh, versus the others surrounding you first. It's it's an interesting um, it's an interesting element. It's one that I like to kind of that I that I continue to harp on, but largely because I don't hear anybody saying it. Um, it's very rare where I come across where somebody says, "Okay, right." We're having this technical dialogue about how to circumvent the state, right? Uh, or we're having this uh, technical dialogue about, you know, the political processes or the, you know, or, or um, you know, kind of how to, you know, self-sufficiency and how to, you know, can your goods in case of, you know, food shortages or, you know, whatever the deal is, right? But I never really hear that element injected anywhere of sort of like, well, what about, you know, what about looking at it through this lens? Um, and so I kind of like to put that on the plate because it's just like, because I do see when I have that conversation with people, um, I see a physical difference with people. They come into the bookstore, right, and they have what, they, what I call um, kind of chicken little syndrome. Um, and, I, and I've been through it. I, I know what it's like. I've been there. 
Um, you know, and at any minute, uh, the government's going to crack down and guys with guns and it's going to be martial law and it's going to be absolutely terrible, right? And they're going to get us all and save my baby, save my baby. Um, and well, and uh, I, they I come mean, in and it's person a tension. You can, a certain person you can thank for that, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say his name. I Yeah, I don't know what the what the scoop is, and I don't know that it's necessarily all one person. Well, um, for myself, I would blame him because <laughs> I was in that syndrome as well at one point, and I would definitely play, lay the blame on... He makes a ton of money doing that, too. Yeah. But it's also... but in, It's in, not good for everything else. Well, his, he also doesn't report on actual stuff that he ever send in. I'm, I'm sending yeah, in. I've, I've, sent, I've, sent, I've sent in multiple things about things that were happening in Austin. Austin, mm-hmm. like APD is like doing their spying on everybody. They're doing the Operation War Drive. Well, and I'll, I'll come to the defense. I, I will come to the defense on that. Um, and because I just... I don't know. I'm not, I'm not quite so quick with it. But the... And, and there's a necessary component there. Um, there... You know, uh, there's there's plenty wrong with a lot of people, and plenty wrong with you know a lot of people's tact and stuff. But it does have a place. Um, and so, as far as getting um, welcome from Camp Obama and welcome into you know this other stuff going on, um, it's absolutely it's a necessary element. I mean, it was. I, I mean, realistically speaking, not a, not a fucking one of us would be sitting here having this conversation if not for. You see. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and it, you know, arguably, I guess, whatever. But but more likely than not, and it's it's a big contributing factor. Now the thing is, is like, um, but I think that that you have to maybe kind of you know move past that at a certain point. I mean, once you kind of know what's going on, you know what's going on, um, and so you can kind of move forward. And and um, well, some of us had you know, experience from what happened to our family members, and so that's what actually woke us up as firsthand experience versus right. listening to Alex. And you and so I would you know try to send him all this stuff, and he, they didn't care. And the fact is, is that what happened to my father? You look at the whole thing with the VA scandal that's going on now. It's been going on since at least the '80s. When he was there, and he was persecuted for being a Boy Scout and a reformer. Um, but, uh, there's, and, and maybe we can get into that at, at some point. The yeah. um, that that's another that's another thing. The um, but yeah, no, everybody does kind of find it their own way, right? Um, but some, but he, he, you know, it's a large contributing factor there, and, and I think a necessary element. But you know, I think you know, just to to go on to that phrase you just said, find you, finding your own way. I think that uh, mm-hmm. occultism is, is uh, has a lot to do with that. People who study the occult are looking to find their own way. That's mm-hmm. what they want. Is they want to find their own way, their own answers by studying and by just observing um, yeah. the, the way that they perceive everything around them. Do you th- that, uh, <laughs> that people are reading into uh, what happens at these award ceremonies where they Claim that there are rituals of initiation for cults. The, 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 Maybe re- they think for themselves, but I mean, it's not like they're. I guess if you if you take a look at the occult, when when people do things like Grant Morrison, for example, Grant Morrison made this comic book called The Invisibles, um, mm-hmm. and the Invisibles. There's a lot of you could tell the Matrix, the movie The Matrix, was influenced a lot by The Invisibles, but effectively it was all these people who were into the occult, and they could, like, go to different, you know, dimensions of, of reality in their minds, or they uh, they all took a lot of drugs and stuff. It was, it was a great comic book, but what Grant Morrison did was he, he was a big uh, student of the occult, and he was into this specific branch of the occult, or specific branch of study called sigils. Mm-hmm. And the concept was that you would effectively make a symbol, that the symbol was supposed to embody some sort of goal that you had, like I want to be a good writer, or mm-hmm. I want to be famous, or <clears throat> I want to go to crazy parties, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And when he would make this comic book, the the purpose behind the sigil was that it gets its power from being used. The more people see it, 
mm-hmm. the the more power it has. And this is everywhere. I mean, you look at the Coca Cola logo, the Dr Pepper logo, Pepsi, like Starbucks. Mm-hmm. The logos are what gives power to these to these yeah. ideas. And he would put these sigils in his comic books. And if you go through his comic books, mm-hmm. the Invisibles, you could find them everywhere. You can find the little sigils that he's made and put in paper. Interesting. And what he said was, as he started doing this. You know, it could be argued that it was a subconscious result, but he he would make mm-hmm. these sigils and try to achieve these goals, and they would start happening. Huh. Like like he he wanted to to get an award, or he wanted to to get famous, mm-hmm. or whatever. Like he wanted to go to parties, or he wanted women to start paying attention to him. Like all sorts of little things started happening, and he found yeah. that just by like doing that, he was taking control of his own personal reality. Well, and I think that there's. I mean, it almost sounds like a you know, alt version, uh, sort of the altcoin version of, of like, uh, you know, what's it, uh, vision boards, is that what they call them? Yeah, Something like, like vision that. boards. Or... No, the ones where you, you paste, like, you know, the house and the car and the, you know, whatever on the thing, right? The vision boards, is that what they're called? I'm sure. Um, it's sunny in Philadelphia, I think they did a spoof on it at one point. Um, but, uh, and then I think they mentioned them in, in uh, what is it like the secret and stuff like this, right? And 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 there's a bunch of different, you know, like Tony Robbins esque type of, I guess maybe stuff like that that makes gets into it. But um, but it sounds kind of similar to that, and I guess it kind of gets into um, this other otherly element of the self that we don't really um, that I think is largely neglected um, in the I guess kind of the um, you know the the struggle, the fight, the empire versus the rebellion, whatever. Um, there's you know everybody kind of puts it on um, to use that analogy, I guess. You know on blasters and on uh, you know <laughs> uh, you know on on Millennium Falcons and, and these different things and the technologies and the drones and everything. And um, and there's less uh, less Jedi going on. There's less um, you know sort of focus on the force, if you will. Um, and and so to, you know, to kind of use that analogy, but I mean, for me, I find that um, <clears throat> the the synchronicity scale, um, what's been interesting is that it it's become more frequent and the gap has become, the time gap between it has become shorter. Um, and so, like, and it happens kind of a lot. <laughs> like, I, so I have to almost, like, watch my thoughts. Um because I can I can think about something and or someone, and I swear to God it'll be maybe you know five minutes something like that and just they stroll in or you know whatever and I mean this is about honestly I'd say it probably happens like it, on average maybe ten fifteen times a day. I that do with phone calls. I mean it's where I look at my phone all of a sudden it starts raining. Well and there's. And there's, there, you know, there's something to be said for, you know, when you look for something, it happens, right? Um, and, you know, so there's some scientific stuff that, you know, like there's some level of debunking, but I think as with most things, the truth is going to lie somewhere in between. I get it with TV. Like if I go to sleep and there's a TV on mm-hmm. um, and like a TV show's playing, I'll have dreams about conversations that are happening and wake up and a couple of seconds later the conversations happen on TV. It's a, it's a bizarre instance and I guess it kind of gets into... This is another interesting element for me that, that nobody really gets into, is the sort of um, I guess psychic element of things. Um, I I tend to have it like it, it's you know it, it, and it, it it just there's not like an on off switch for it you know what I mean it's not like quick think of a number you know anything like that but um, it will kind of come in and out um, and so like. You know how you have a thought sequence, right? And you go, okay, I'm thinking about this, and then that's going to lead me to that, and now I'm thinking about that, and da da da, right? And you follow kind of an order of things. Occasionally, shit will just pop in there, like that is not at all on that track. Like you're still on the track, thinking of a certain thing, and then you know, little white dog pops in, or you know, whatever. And it's like, well, why the hell is little white dog in my thought process about um, you know the engine that I'm going to drop in this car? Like where, you know what I mean? Or whatever, or this conversation I'm having with somebody about where they're from, or you know whatever, <clears throat> and um, and there's a there's a real fine subtlety there. It, it, like if you def- if you and you can if you can gauge between what your head is creating, 
and you can um, and the trick is sort of turning it off. Um, if you can turn it off, you can sort of um, you can distinguish between what your head is creating and what is just kind of coming in there. And um, and I've had times where you know it's it, like it can just be talking to somebody on the internet that I haven't met before. You know, and all of a sudden it's kind of like this person's from the East Coast. Like, not based on like language structure or any, it's just like a vibe, like a feel. And so, you know, you kind of pitch it out there. It's like, you're somewhere like, you know, from the East Coast and they're, you know, yeah, you know, Delaware or, you know, whatever, right? Um, and, and that's, I've started to pay attention to it because once that happens, um, it's like, uh, kind of like Patton Oswald does that bit about the dog taking the dog for the walk, right? And how, like, if he gets two out of three, he gets really apeshit excited, right? Um, so he puts on his shoes. He's like, oh, I don't think there's anything. You know, and then uh, if he grabs the poop bags, he's like, oh, my God. You know, it's kind of the same thing. Like, so if I get one, I'm just kind of like, eh, what the fuck are the odds, right? Um, but then if, an, like, sometimes, then I'll, you know, another thing will kind of pop in. And it's like, and you're the, you know what I mean? And I'll, t I'll get a little bolder with it on the second one. It's like, and you're the, like, youngest of three, you know, or something like that. And, uh, you know, they'll, you know, and if they confirm on that, it's like, oh, shit, you know, like it's on. And at that point, all you have to do is just turn your head off, you know, and the shit just kind of comes. And then and then eventually you'll just hit, just fucking hit a brick wall, you know, and like it's just off again. But the, the instance where I kind of picked it up was, I don't know if you call it deja vu or what you call it, but the way I've defined it is like on a time scale, um, I call it um, like ACBC basically, meaning that you're in time frame A, suddenly you're in C, now you're in B, just after A, and you're creeping into C again. And what happened, the story that with me is a buddy of mine is driving, it's back in, in this old neighborhood I used to live, and we're coming around the curve, suddenly I'm well ahead of the curve, and like halfway up the road, this orange and white cat darts out from under this little Toyota, thump, thump, right? And hits this cat. And suddenly... I'm back at B, and we're just coming around the curve, coming up on that moment. And I didn't even, you know, I was like, it was weird. It was just like, the fuck was that? You know, like, you're, like, there. And <clears throat> I had enough time to think to tell him, like, hey, you might want to slow down. And I didn't say shit. And orange and white cat, little Toyota, thump, thump. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like, you know, that just... um. But I've learned to test it before, and in fact, uh, with with uh, with my my ex and and, and my good friend, um, you know, uh, that happened at, at the at one of the old places. There's a bunch of deer, and you know, twists and turves and everything, and then you know, I'm at the bottom of the hill, and suddenly I'm at the top of the hill, and then I'm, you know, but at the top of the hill, there's like six or seven deer just standing in the middle of this road, and um, you know, back I'm back at the middle, and I just turned like I knew what it was because I that had happened before. I said, hey, watch this. I was like, deer, you know? And I just let off the gas, and we kind of crept up to the top of the hill. And once we got there, there's this, like, six or seven deer just standing there, just, you know? <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, I think that there is that stuff. And, I mean, really, how else do you explain that shit? You know? Like, what other... What do you have to, to, you know what I mean, to explain that stuff? Science just kind of looks at it and goes, eh, it's fucking anomaly. What do you do? You know, and then, like, they just kind of throw it in the, you know, like in the junk drawer, you know what I mean, and close the drawer. Um, and, uh, but you, but you can't do that with everything for, you know. It's called faith. Well, at a certain point, though, you have to, you know what I mean? Like, if every day somebody shows up at your door, you know what I mean? It, like, you know, knocks three times and it's, you know, Mormons, right? So selling you Bibles or whatever the fuck it is, you know, that they sell. The, um, like, at a certain point, you know, if it happens every day at 9.15 in the morning, like, after a while, you're like, eh, it's fucking 9.15, dog knock, knock. It's like, oh, fucking Mormons are here again, right? You, so you begin to have faith that that's what it is. Well, I think it's faith and morals, uh that just you know tying back in what you were saying earlier in the broadcast about do you need the state to keep everyone uh, whip uh, crack the whip and keep everyone in check no it's if people are morally good individuals they will do the right thing all the time especially if they do, uh, if they have the fear of going to hell they want to go to heaven i mean that's what mm -hmm. that's what the ultimate goal is and like you said if it's if death happens only once you don't have to clean up the mess and oh by the way 
you get to see some family members and meet some cool people that uh, were in this realm before we entered it. Mm -hmm. That's heaven. You know what heaven is to me? Honest to God. I get to go and I get to live my life again, right? But all the shit that got stuck in the filter, in the mental filter, where, you know what I mean? Where, like, somebody's talking to you about something and you just want to just, you know what I mean? There's something you want to say. You make all the right decisions and the you, second go around. No, no, it's not even that. No, you, you no know better. Like, you, well, you just don't filter them. I, in a way, I, I think that would be great. You know what I mean? Like, just to be able to, like, when somebody's saying something and you, you, you're maintaining like social niceties, and you know you're like, oh wow, that's really interesting, and uh huh, and da da da. Like when you want to just tell them, like I couldn't give a shit about what you're, you know what I mean? Like because you've had those conversations, right? Where you're just like, couldn't give a fuck, right. couldn't give a fuck, yeah. couldn't, you know? Like there's not one, I, you know, like look, I here's my wallet. There's a dollar in there, but no, no fucks to give, right? Like you, like and but you don't. And you know it would have felt good. I think that that's what heaven's like. I really do. I think that you get, you know, you get and you go, and you just get to do things. And there's like no nobody punches you in the face for hey, that's rude. Like you know what I mean. Like you can just say it, and it like it's just like water off a duck's back, right? But you, you know, the you, Urantia book has a very interesting outlook on heaven. It's a whole. I need to read that. That you you told me about that, and. Yeah. Um, We've uh, sent that to. Uh, uh, I guess it's been sent off at this point. I believe. I hope we got it. Um, and if not, I need to. I need to get with. Uh, you know, get with them and, and see what's going on. But uh, that's that's one that either has been or is being sent uh, to our friend uh, Ross Ulbricht, uh, of course, um, who is being alleged as uh, being the Dread Pirate Roberts um, by the uh, federal government and um, on a bunch of bogus stuff. Of course, we've we've talked about it in the crypto show a little bit. Um, but, uh, of course the murder for hire charges we're finding out are all just a bunch of bunk, um, BS, uh, you know, a lot of these people, the names just not even being people that ever existed. Um, and the ones that were, uh, there's no, nothing to, to back it up. And so, um, you know, for those not familiar, um, basically what ended up happening is, you know, they said, oh, we're, we're going to deny him bail on these charges, uh, you know, cause he's dangerous and everything. Uh, we're going to deny him bail. Because uh, murder for hire, blah blah, and then when it came time for formal charges, like none of it came up. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Like if he's such a danger and everything, and we're denying him bail, then why would you not and you know bring this up? And so it seems like it's kind of a, a, a ploy on the government's part to um, sort of paint this in a in, you know paint him negatively in the court of public opinion before there's actually a trial. Um, but you see, as people become more aware and educated about the story of uh, Ross, that all of a sudden he garners a great deal of support from the people that become more aware of, of the information. Um, and so, you know, for that reason, he's, he's picking up a great deal of traction. Uh, of course, uh, we've put together a Indiegogo uh, campaign for him, Indiegogo Free Ross. You can go check that out. Um, and donate there. There is a lot of uh, great different uh, things that we have up, including uh, you know a 3D printer uh, signed by our friend Cody Wilson. Um, uh, you know an onion. Uh, you know uh, router. Uh, is that what it is? Uh, the router. Router. Thank you. Um, but uh, no, like an onion router, which is kind of an anonymity um, you know, router there. Uh, free Ross t-shirts, keychains, all kinds of different stuff. So check it out, Indiegogo, Free Ross. Uh, highly encouraged. We got, uh, so far we're at like about, just about 25%. We got uh, a little over 20 days left, I think. So go check it out. There's a lot of really cool stuff on there. Um, highly encourage everybody to check that out. Uh, also, um, because I was supposed to do this probably about 30 minutes ago, but uh, if you want to donate to the show, uh, you can always contact me uh, directly. It's Ryan Dixon, D-I-X-O-N can be reached at gmail.com. Ryan Dixon can be reached at gmail.com. And uh, if you want to donate $100, what we'll do is we will get you set up with a uh, commodity disc. I think I, I don't think I have it on me today, but uh, commoditydiscs.com. There's actually only, uh, I stand corrected, I said 2,000 last time. There's actually only 1,000 of these that are being made. It's uh, made by a, a friend of mine, Arlo. He's a brilliant guy. And it is uh, these silver commodity discs, um, one troy ounce silver, and uh, it's got a QR code on it, which is kind of brilliant because you can take this thing, scan it, and, at the, and get real-time value 
of uh, you know spot prices on silver. And uh, again, it's commoditydisks.com. Otherwise, if you want to get a hold of one of these things, um, I think it's a limit of ten uh, that you have to buy uh, to to even get your hands on it. So it's really the only way to to get a hold of a single one. Um, is to do that, and of course it goes to support the show and, and uh, you know get some more equipment in here. And uh, I should give you a hundred dollars right now. <laughs> I think I've got a coin somewhere. I think it's in my bag actually. I'll start with the one that I've got. I'll have to uh, hit Arlo up on that uh, a little bit later and say hey. Um, but uh, no, it uh, it does help out. It kind of keeps things going because um, you know obviously I'm not uh, getting getting paid for this, um, but. Uh, at any rate, uh, commoditydisks.com, again, uh, and if you want to contact me, it's Ryan Dixon, can be reached at gmail.com. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of getting back into, um, you know, some of this other discussion, though, uh, the, the free Ross thing, of course, that's, that's a huge deal. Um, Jeffrey Tucker now, uh, you know, he's got his free Ross shirt. Our, our friend Joel sold him one at the uh, at Pork Fest. Sold him, too. Or that's right, yeah, he sold him too, didn't he? And it's interesting because, yeah, this is Joel. Joel's now sold him a, a candle, which he uh, gave to his koala. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's too much to process. Then, yeah, and uh, he, uh, and then also these two shirts. But it's the first time I've ever seen uh, Jeffrey Tucker, um, you know, in in anything but uh, the most dapper of attire. Uh, he's he's quite the quite the dapper gentleman. And uh, but he's got him in a you know, picture of the T-shirt rather than the you know full really nice suit with the bow tie and all the rest, right? So sorry to go off on a side note here, but uh, did I tell you this about... whole show has been a side note? Yeah. Knock yourself out. Sorry to you know, sorry to do that. <laughs> did I tell you about when I uh, went out with Ethereum uh, mm, about two mm-hmm. weekends ago? We went to this bar, this British pub in Zug, Switzerland, and we walk in. Mm-hmm. And what song is playing on karaoke? What song are they screaming in karaoke? Never gonna <coughs> give you up by Rick Astley. <laughs> and I got wait, 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 the, wait. The whole thing, the Rick roll. The yeah, whole yeah. thing was a Rick roll. Like it was a giant Rick roll. I That's walked hilarious. into this bar and there's karaoke going on, and I'm with Ethereum. I'm like I can't handle this right now. That's one of those things. Like life, I mean, that's what I love about life, and it's it's it is the surreality behind it. You know what I mean? Is like there's these moments where you just look at it and you're like, it's almost like a Truman Show moment where you start looking around for like, okay, who the fuck is writing this? You know, because like there's no way that all these elements. Yeah, when am I gonna meet my know, hero? Background that we, I never ever see. It's like, oh, uh, the whole thing has been. I'm on candid camera. Okay, wah, so when's wah, everyone's wah, gonna wah, come wah, out? Wah. Yeah, it's. The, Sad trumpet plays or something, right? Um, yeah, I forgot. I don't. Did we even get into the Ethereum thing on this on uh, the show yet? Did we talk about that at did all? We talk about Ethereum. Other than the Rickroll, no. No, I think that's the first time we brought it up. Um, let's get into Ethereum briefly. We covered it on the crypto show a little bit, but um, it. I like talking about it because it is a. Um, it's yeah. a little bit of a mind stretcher. I'm not even. If Ethereum does all the things that I'm thinking that it does, and if it doesn't, then you know, mm-hmm. there's a whole doorway there for a whole new currency to come out to do the things that I'm thinking of. But I mean, the way that I describe Ethereum, yeah, I hope it works that way. It that's kind of what it seemed like because when at Texas Bitcoin Conference, when I went to that, um, uh, Vitalik spoke. Am I pronouncing it right? Vitalik? Vitalik. Vitalik. Right. Um, it's such a yeah. It's such an, an interesting name, um, Vitalik. Uh, but uh, and he's a brilliant guy. Um, but you know he spoke and kind of talked about it a little bit. And 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 I don't do it justice, I guess, by explaining it. But I guess the idea is um, because it's a lot more complex than that um, and and elegant, I think. But um, if I'm gonna do it injustice and just kind of give like the you know like ogre you know club version of it. Um, Shrek version. Yeah, exactly. Just like the it does the things. Um, <laughs> it's if you can imagine Bitcoin and the way that it operates, uh, if you have kind of a limited understanding of it, even even that, um, and imagine if you could put programs, uh, computer code and programs inside of Bitcoin in a sense. Yeah. Um, and so these decentralized versions of of anything that you can code. Um, which is a wild concept. I mean, you apply this to um, 
say torrents, right? Uh, you know, and and uh, of course, you know, Mega uh, and all the stuff that he's faced, right? Um, it wouldn't be an issue uh, because there's zero centralization. It's just out there floating around. Or or an exchange. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, exactly. An exchange inside the network without any control. Yeah, and so and there doesn't have to be any. Um, or, there's no worry about greed because mm-hmm. the program isn't going to run run away with the money. Yeah. And if the program is open and everybody on and the network is running the program, that yeah, and so it applies sort of um, market principle and everything to um, you know the free market to it's it's an interesting intersection where free market and technology converge, and it's an exciting intersection because. Um, you know, so when we had Jeffrey Tucker um, join us uh, for one of the Alliance of Austin Agorist meetings here in, in Austin at Brave New Books, um, we that was the first time during that conference that I had a real sense of, like a almost palpable sense of um, in a, a stateless society, an anarchist future inev- being inevitable. Um, I, I had never, I mean, because the way that Jeffrey was talking about it was, um, it was very just matter of factly, and then it's echoed by by our friend Joel, who um, you know puts these productions together, and and when you heard it like that, it, it like it just it, it was like a duh moment where you went, holy shit, like the way things are going, the way that uh, man is designed. Uh, you know the basics of you know praxeology, human action, um, and and the tendencies for technology to do what they do. You know if we apply all these together, and the tendencies for states to do what they do. If we apply all these together, like there's like there's no question. Like that is the end result. Is that the next stage of an evolution is sort of out of this thing of government and into this um, experiment that is um, fully. Uh, market-based, that is fully uh, stateless, that is fully, you know, so forth. Um, and and I, I, I'll level with you, man. I mean, since that moment, and since the moments where I've understood <laughs> Gesundheit... Thank you. Well, I'm not ordained, so it only counts for so much. Um, but uh, I'm going to do that one day. I'm actually going to get ordained for the guys that insist on being called doctor you outside of the workforce. No, I'm saying I'm going to. Yeah, and it takes then like five minutes. For the, for the guys... Insist on you know what I'm talking about. They want to be called doctor outside yeah. the workforce. Um, I would love to I see. I would love to see you preside over a wedding. Honestly, I would. You can do it. It takes like five minutes. It's free. Go online. Universal. I think I, I think I might end up because I like the idea of you know. Well, that's Doctor Smith to you, and I go great. Then you can call me Father, uh, Big Daddy D, if I like you. You know, um, and I think that that'll shut down that whole argument. But the um, thing you know, so we had Jeffrey and it. it uh, you know, they, they, and I had that kind of aha moment where I was like, holy shit, this is like really where things are going. Um, and then, you know, also the Bitcoin thing, like coming to really understand it. And I think it's that combination of understanding Bitcoin and having that sense that like this is an inevitability where things are going that I, I swear to God, I haven't had one bad day since then. And I mean, I've had all the usual, you know, the car troubles and money and, you know, uh, relationship and, you know, like whatever, right? And and all the different things that you can have problems with that, like, still exist. It's not like I've just gotten lucky and had a bunch of good, you know what I mean, like, stepped in the lucky dog shit days, right? Um, but I just, I haven't had any real what I'd consider bad days at, at, since that. Because every single one, like, whatever happens, like, there's like, oh, God, they got to deal with this thing. Uh, but when you wake up with the sense like, oh, one day closer to a stateless society of free people who are not coerced or intimidated by, uh, you know, uh, somebody claiming a monopoly on the initiation of violent force. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of exciting. So, but, uh, at any rate, Leland's looking at me kind of funny. Like no, I'm looking past something. you. I heard something outside. Yeah, you might have. It's entirely possible. But um, at any rate, um, that would explain. You want to go check it out? Um, I think we're safe here. 
<laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you might get your wish. Someone might walk into the wall. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. But uh, yeah. So it's uh. Why is everybody looking back that way? You guys weird me out with that shit. Um. Down here, down in this basement. We got another talking 15, talking We got another earlier. fifteen minutes of this broadcast. So. <laughs> but um. It's interesting though. You know, um, I just, you know, with the Bitcoin thing, it just, it's like this stuff is an inevitability. Yeah, it is. Um, and regulations and all these little, little talks about laws and rules and taxes, you know, they're, they're inconsequential in the grand scheme of things because in reality, mm -hmm. regulation can't keep up with the speed of innovation in this whole sphere. Yeah. Every time a law is passed, every time that they try to change something, we just are beating them too fast now. And information is spreading faster than they can spread propaganda. Yeah. And then there's going to be this threshold that we pass, that just society passes, that the entrenched powers can't keep up with. It's a... I mean, it's a remarkable time to be alive. Um, it's it's really fascinating to see how this stuff is, is moving. Um, because it's, I mean, the information is moving at a, just a amazing rate and things are, you know, the fundamentals that have never been tinkered with ever are changing. And this idea of trustless systems, you've always needed a third party. You've always needed a bank. You've always needed a government. You've always needed, you know, these things for exchange. And, you know, for, for, for these kinds of, you know, banking, etc. And to see that that's changing now. I mean, it, it, I, it's, it's entirely possible that we're looking at something that will um, overshadow the um, birth of the Internet by magnitudes. I mean, writing code is the new form of protest. Don't... Out yeah, absolutely. Don't go do Occupy Wall Street. Don't. I mean, yeah, sure, do Occupy Wall Street. I mean, that got what, whatever co-opted though. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. my my whole views on Occupy Wall Street are um, irrelevant. <laughs> they at this they, point. they quickly went to <coughs> well, not, well, well yeah. the thing is they quickly went to from spontaneity. You look at Occupy or you look at any of these things, the Arab Springs or what happened in Cuba. Uh, in, in the late 1950s with the Cuban Revolution, it goes from mm -hmm. the spontaneity of, of overthrowing the existing uh, tyrannical um, totalitarianism, and it gets, and they replace it with something far worse. Yeah. The, um, uh, but, uh, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it, I've spent a lot of days and, and time looking at these different things that are coming out. Um, colored coin now. Colored coin? Uh, yeah. I mean, the idea... That, and there's that joke, real coin. I, you know, it's not even worth talking about because it's going to be irrelevant. Yeah. The colored the color coin thing is interesting to me. Um, the, uh, you know, this idea that... Um, you know, that you can issue IPOs, stocks, um, you know, trade titles and deeds and all these different things um, in, you know, ledgers that are more secure and more permanent than, than the ones that government currently offer. Um, but it's, it's, I mean, it's a fascinating and, and for vastly cheaper, you know. So, I don't know. I mean... We've we've sat down with Jimmy Song. We've we've talked to him before, um, on shows. And um, yeah, you hear that? No, I don't. I mean, you guys keep looking back like over my shoulder, and I can't see back there. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, at any rate, but um, I don't know. It's a it's a fascinating um, it's a fascinating time. I mean, just. I was I was plane the first time I went to Switzerland I was sitting on the plane at 40 40,000 42,000 feet mm -hmm. and I was sitting on the plane Delta Airlines British Airways 
and uh, I'm on the internet and I'm writing code and I'm sending Bitcoin money. I'm sending Bitcoin <laughs> to people. And just thinking of that concept, I'm in the sky in a chair on the internet communicating, you know, mm. at the speed of light with anybody on the planet. Like that that's the future. We're in the future. I paid for my trip with Bitcoin. Like yeah. that that's that's the future. They got free Wi Fi on planes now? Not free. It's kinda of pricey. Eh, it was like twenty dollars. But it's not as bad as the earphones. No, earphones are still terrible. Earphones are still ter- terrible. Also, I will not fly American Airlines again. They are also terrible. <laughs> I don't blame you there. No loss. Yeah. It's, um... 2014's a big year, you know? I mean, I was saying that it'd be the year of the Bitcoin big boys. 2016 is going to be an interesting year. 2015, I think, is going to be a, a lull. Or, you know, interesting stuff will happen, but I think that... The things that are planned mm-hmm. to be finished by 2016, or the things that are supposed to release in 2016. Mm-hmm. I mean, Ethereum's big, big date is that they're reaching for is 2016. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're designing for 2016. They're designing for web technologies that aren't even supposed to be standard till 2016. And I mean, 2016 is my uh, my golden year. That's that's what I'm betting on. It it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, I mean, because what, what are, it came out in 09, right? What so. I want to see is, uh, perhaps I'm, I'm alone in this opinion, but I want to see a match of the video game world, video game technologies, and the crypto world, and mm-hmm. like crypto ideas and agorist ideas. Hmm. Um, I want to see a mesh of that. You know, maybe virtual worlds or virtual realities. Mm-hmm. Um, Hmm. Things becoming more virtual. I mean, what is it, 2014, and we're still looking at web browsers and browsing the internet like it's 1991? There's got to be a change. <laughs> yeah, where's our flying cars? Yeah. I mean, where's our hmm. where's our Back to the Future 2? Where's uh, my head-mounted display I can put on and actually walk around the internet Google, Google, and interact hmm. with people? Google, That's Google it. you got to go to the domain for that. It's oh. uh, No, it is. I don't know if you've been there, but those tie-in sort of... It's a weird thing to me. It's sort of like... Uh, Falling into the pages of a magazine. But if, I mean, if these technologies aren't ubiquitous, and they need yeah. to be. And the day that I go and like spend a hundred dollars, or go to Walmart and buy a head-mounted display for a hundred dollars, and like jack yeah. into. Yeah, I mean, back way. Back to the Future two. That, but the, I mean, what is the reality of Back to the Future two? The fifty-dollar Pepsi, and the market's accepting yeah. that. Where you have a ten-dollar burger and fries. I mean, we don't have flying cars. We when we have the big TVs, but we don't have the big. Um, the, the head-mounted displays, or the self, uh, the hoverboards, or the self-drying clothes, or any of that, and uh, good stuff. Yeah. I wanted to, uh, you know, that I came into ownership recently of a hundred million dollars. Oh, there you go. Became you a hundred million there, huh? Yep. What do you got? In, uh, what's the? What's the? Ah, Zimbabwe. So very nice. Can we? Is there a way? Can we? Uh, get can you see that? Actually, let me see if I can. Pull it forward. See if you can. No, don't don't manually. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. That's fine. I don't know. If I you actually, can just Jonathan, uh, get, hand it back. Hand it back to Jonathan. I can, He could put up to his camera. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Hyperinflation. It's got a. Yeah. Okay. Eh, close enough. Yeah, you can read that. It's got a. It's got an expiration date on it. <laughs> it's got an expir. It's like within was it twenty minutes? This is not going to be worth anything. That's funny. It was the, never uh, worth anything. <laughs> but uh, that's even less of anything. I have the paper it's, it's printed on. <laughs> that's funny. We had, uh, of course, those are part of the tickets we had for uh, a long side night when we had that here. Um, part, the, the tickets I, you could buy were um, other nations' currencies, like over the hyperinflated current. The ironic thing about the casting decisions is he had a couple guys from Star Trek, specifically Voyager, and the weird thing is. Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek universe is mostly socialistic, cashless society. Other, than, other, other than the Ferengi, there's no money. It's kind of bizarre. There's like I the mean, there's yeah. the credit. There's like the intergalactic credit or whatever. But the, there's no the money. Latinum, yeah, yeah. And only the Ferengi used it because with the replicator. I mean, if you had a replicator, what would you need anything for? You can replicate all the food you want. Yeah, but as as goes the real. That's my question. There's only so much you can copy, but is it ever as good as the real thing? I don't is know. it? If you could tell the like, there was this one episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation where, yeah, where he was eating, where Riker was eating Bach, but then he gets on a Klingon ship, and then it's actually alive, and that's the way they actually eat the thing. My favorite episode of Star Trek 
the next generation. <laughs> now that we're on this topic, I'm this just episode, like, I love that now we're on. Like I just I know like virtually just you're just okay. you're Mr. Star Wars and I know dick about it. Yeah, well, they, there's and, this episode. So they get all these Irish people on the ship because they need to take them off the planet, and all the Irish people like end up making booze in the cargo hold and like get the replicator to make whiskey and stuff. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, they had synthahol. They yeah, didn't synthahol. Use, they didn't use it real alcohol. That's the weirdest damn thing. And so when they had Scotty, uh, the uh, the guy who played Scotty in uh, to give a cameo on an episode. He goes, this ain't the real stuff. It's like, what do you got? It's like, well, they go, well, Guinan's got her own collection of actual alcohol. And they go, like, what is it? It's like, it's grain. And it's the only thing on the ship they actually have booze. <laughs> it's the most bizarre. I, I guess ADD I, theater, right? No, I just, I, I, I never got into it, really. I, um, you know, the, uh, what did I get? I mean, Star Wars and then, you know, Firefly. That was good. Um there wasn't that much action other than the J.J. Abrams movies in Star mm-hmm. Trek. If you go back and look at the episodes now, it's literally just them just standing and talking. It's like a talk fest, more or less. It's almost like a soap opera when you think about it. When not much happens. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe I'll have to get into the... I don't know. I haven't really um, watched that one, but uh, or at least paid too much mind to it. But... Uh, Does it sound like... So, okay, so for those of you that don't know, I guess let me illustrate it. Because um, not a lot of people do know this. This uh, We're being we're broadcasting um, underground. Um, it's uh, in a basement, uh, in a sense, um, at Austin, Texas, in a what is a, both a literal and figurative underground uh, bookstore. Mm-hmm. But it's also under a uh, Chase Bank. And so um, it's kind of a in the still of the night here, so it's kind of an interesting. Um, We're actually next to the old bank vault that they don't use anymore. Well, they don't have money in them anymore, so such thing. But um, next to the walled off ice cream shop next to that creepy place with the stairs that go down next door. Oh yeah. 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 It's a nice weird vibe you got. Yeah, it's a it's a bizarre little place. It, it's stranger so um, in the still of the night, but uh, at any rate. So I guess that's uh, what do we got? Four minutes here? Oh, we got about three, three two and a half. So. Okay. Well, I guess in that case, I'll uh, wrap it up. So the show is uh, the Ryan Dixon show. It's every uh, today's actually for uh, Wednesday, July 9th. I kind of like um, ADD Theater though that you suggested. Well, maybe we'll change it. Who knows? Yeah. Um, uh, the guest tonight, Jonathan Rumian. Jonathan. Appreciate you joining us. Um, Anytime. Yeah, a lot of fun having you. Um, and I'm glad you're back from, from Switzerland. Me too. Um, so I'm looking forward <laughs> to some of the chocolates. Um, they don't like it when I say that. <laughs> but uh, Leland, uh, fantastic job. Much appreciated. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, uh, go check out our Indiegogo. It's Indiegogo Free Ross. Uh, you can pull that up. Uh, just, you know, Google Indiegogo Free Ross. And uh, once again, uh, I did actually find uh, the coin, by the way. Uh, the coin, I don't know if you can get it on uh, the screen or not. Maybe but, give it to uh, Rumi again. It's, uh, this is um, the uh, commodity discs, uh, commoditydiscs.com. There's a thousand of these total overall. Uh, they are uh, in kind of uh, you know, pure uh, silver here, but uh, they've got these little fancy QR codes, lets you go through, lets you uh, see exactly what the spot price is at any given time. Uh, there's only a thousand of them that have actually been made, and so uh, the only way to get them is ordering 10 at a time, or if you want to donate $100 to the show, uh, what we'll do is we will get you situated uh, with one of these uh, lovely discs, um, or, uh, you know, uh, get you situated with the man that can get you one of them, either which way. Uh, and you can contact me. It's Ryan Dixon. It can be reached at gmail.com. Uh, for myself, for uh, everybody at Voluntary Virtues Network, uh, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, be sure to check us out uh, every, uh, I guess, uh, Eastern time, uh, Thursday, uh, bright and early at, uh, you know, midnight into uh, 2 in the morning. So, Thanks so much, friends. Much appreciated, and uh, you know, be good to each other. Tulu.